Hi, welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with Owen from NextGen Healthcare. Hi, Owen. Welcome to the show. Hi, Andrea. Thank you for having me. So what does NextGen Healthcare do? So NextGen Healthcare provides a set of integrated technical solutions uh, targeted at the U.S. ambulatory market. Uh, our primary goal is really about empowering the transformation to value-based care. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about deployment of infrastructure for your population health platform. What is population health platform? Mm -hmm. So towards that value-based care, uh, population health care uh, is really around the aggregation of uh, multiple data sources and the presentation of a population level view to healthcare providers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on the board mm -hmm. here, I do see AWS services and I can mm -hmm. really identify here some interesting mm -hmm. pattern. So uh, the traditional sort of code development activity, code commit, code build, I suspect there are some developers doing some work. Can you walk us through maybe a workflow, an example of what happens here? Certainly. Yeah. So we have developers uh, who are committing both application code, infrastructure code, uh, to code commit. Mm -hmm. At that point, uh, code is flowing into code pipeline. Uh, so a, a code pipeline run is triggered off of uh, you know, a specific branch. Um, we then have, uh, again, both application and uh, CloudFormation code being pushed into CloudFormation in order to create or update a CloudFormation stack. I see. Uh, if we were talking about a Lambda deployment, we would have the, uh, you know, the Lambda application uh, code, so it would be the jar, uh, and then all the cloud formation we need. Okay. Uh, what's critical to us is the IAM role mm -hmm. that cloud formation is allowed to use. I see. And uh, this is where we can put strong governance on exactly what we're allowed to deploy. Uh, for instance, we, we want to make sure we're aligning with the services under our BAA okay. uh, because we are dealing with patient information. It's very I sensitive. Yeah. So you're in a heavily mm -hmm. regulated industry. Your developers are developing code. Mm -hmm. What exactly are they developing here? What do they have access to? Right? Are we talking about applications, specifically application code, or are we talking about the backend infrastructure as well? And so we, it could be everything. Really, we, okay. we allow the deployment through this process to network, database, compute, or our edge components. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at this board and saying CloudFormation template provisioning all these is all these resources then provisioned through one CloudFormation template, or have you come up with any other approach to tackle this? So we currently deploy each tier as its own set of CloudFormation templates by its own pipeline. I see. Uh, we bind these together through CloudFormation import-export variables. Uh, and then we, we move sensitive data uh, with secrets manager or uh, uh, systems manager parameter store. I see. So by breaking it apart in different cloud formation stacks, what really did the business achieve by doing so? Well, initially we had these all under a single cloud formation stack. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a single parent with multiple nested uh, stacks. And while it, it gave us one place to deploy, it also led to problems when, uh, for instance, a, a CloudFront distribution was deploying and potentially would block any other activity in the CloudFormation stack for a half hour or more. Uh, that was amplified if mm -hmm. there was an error and we needed to roll back. I so see. no one could deploy any you know, application code here, database changes here, or changes in the network if the edge was blocking. Okay. Uh, so by breaking these out, we, we like to say we limited the blast radius and we, we reduce the time uh, that people are blocked from deployment. Yeah, very mm -hmm. interesting pattern here that you could do rollbacks mm -hmm. much quicker yeah. without necessarily impacting every single component mm -hmm. here. Um, so in an environment, traditional environment, you have production and then you have tests, development, QA. What are we talking about here in the cloud formation? What mm -hmm. environments do you have, ex or do you extend into? So this is meant to, to be the deployment of an entire environment. So okay. we consider a blank AWS account. This deploys everything into it. Uh, we then repeat. So this could be a production deployment. We could then uh, 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 deploy to test or development. 
Interesting. Mm -hmm. How do you handle things like governance, right? Because I suspect that's in extremely important in your industry. How do you handle mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. It's critical, yeah, absolutely. And so uh, a large portion is, is uh, what we allow CloudFormation to deploy, mm -hmm. right, through these, the IAM role and the policies uh, we provide. This gets us so far. This gets us uh, to catch errors before they're built. But we realize that won't catch everything. And so we, we leverage other services, such as Config and GuardDuty to be constantly monitoring for compliance of deployed components. Oh, very interesting. Now, what when you go through an iteration, give us an estimate, give our viewers an estimate, how quick can you turn this around? How quick can you do an update and have it all stood mm -hmm. up? And so we've seen deployments for uh, compute components such as Lambda on the order of minutes. Okay. Uh, Edge components take longer. Database, depending on what we're doing, could be half hour, 45 minutes. But the latency introduced by this portion is, is not, uh, I would say, it's not material compared to if we were updating the edge through the web console. Very cool. Oh, and this is amazing architecture. I really see some interesting pattern. And I think the, the true value here I see is quick deployment in a highly regulated industry, right? So thank you again for your time. And thank you for watching. This is my architecture.